Okay, right here we have Brandon Lord, and uh, he's he's ready to take a dry swing with our overload underload bat. And uh, some things can change when you're hitting against a pitch ball. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that, so sometimes analyzing just a dry swing cannot tell the whole story. However, we can kind of see some things, such as his swing plane. So we'll go ahead and play it in real speed right here. There's the swing, and then we'll go back, and this time we'll slow it down. And so there we have it. We have the uh, where he starts, and then we have the, the load right here, and then the stride. And nothing matters until the stride foot lands. That's where everything, uh, the different mechanical positions become important. And so when he lands right here, um, you see the flex in the back back knee, which is good. And you can see, if we go back to the start here, his hand his hand position. And his hands are really high. And uh, him also being a taller guy, um, this could cause some problems from what I see. Um, the path of his swing is going to be a lot steeper than it needs to be. So, um, our whole goal is hitting the ball in the barrel and we want our bat to be really flat through the zone for a long, a period of time as possible. And so with his hands really high, he's not really getting them back. Um, we really on the load, we want the hands about right there. So we want to take them back, um, instead of up. And so as you watch, as the swing comes down, the path is more down. And it wasn't so much down that time, but all his dry swings um, are at would be at pitches that are even with his chest, which is, in reality, most of the pitches aren't that high. They're a lot lower. So on the lower pitches, he's going to have to take more of an angle of that line that I just drew um, to get to the baseball. And so what that means is... He, he has a lot greater chance for hitting straight down on the ball and hitting it into the ground or getting underneath of it and hitting a pop-up. And so he's not has a, a small window where he can actually hit the ball in the barrel and uh, hit a line drive. So there's a smaller margin for error. So um, to fix this, you know, and it can be hard to change a swing path, but uh, I, you know, I was working with him to – get a little bit more flex in his back leg. And, and a lot of times taller guys don't really like to do that. Um, but it's really important to get more flex because our, our thing about our quads and our hamstrings are really big muscles. And so we have a lot of power in those muscles. And so a lot more power than our upper body. So if we're not using those, we're, we're losing out on a lot of power. Not only power, but just more flex in the back knee is going to flatten out the swing. The, the swing path isn't going to be as straight down like it is in like it is right now so hold a little more flex on the back knee and during the load we're going to try to load a little bit more on that back knee get a little more flex a little more rhythm back with the lower half and uh, just work in a mirror take dry swings um, to lower the hand position so doing those two things is going to flatten out the swing a whole lot without actually changing the swing. All you're doing is um, holding more flex, getting more flex rhythm back on the back knee so you can explode forward and have more force production as well as being a little bit looser in the upper arms. And Because uh, when you hold your hands out high, you really um, get your large back muscles involved and not so much um, the loose snap in the forearm. So we hold the hands a little lower. We kind of take the large, slow back muscles out of it and uh, allows us to take a flatter path to the baseball. So um, we really want to get more. That's a little bit low. We'll clear that out. But we want to get those hands lower and take them you know think more back to forward instead of up to down like it is right now so um those type of things will allow you to adjust to low pitches and really flatten out the bat path and give you a better chance to hit the ball in the barrel because the bat's flatter through the zone for a longer period of time 
So those two things, holding the flex, getting more on the back knee, and lowering the hands a little bit can really be achieved. Just by a lot of repetition, taking dry swings, watching yourself in the mirror, and uh, focusing on those things when you're practicing. I would advise only focusing on one thing at a time and, and try to really make that a habit. And I would really focus on the back knee to start off with. And then you can move on to the hands. So too many things at one time is information overload and nothing gets implemented. So um, and we'll work on some drills. Um, the lead leg lift where you hold your front knee up even with your hip for about three seconds before you go forward forces you to balance on your back leg. Hold the flex. That's a great way to get the feeling of holding the flex on the back knee. And the uh, chicken wing drill where you kind of flap your elbows together and uh, that forces your uh, to have loose hands and forearms and you're not able to do that is if you're holding your hands really high um, like they are right now so um, those two things chicken wing lead leg lift are great drills to implement to work on those two areas